Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. It's Polyester here and today's Thursday so we had a Dead by Daylight dev stream and I'm going to try and condense it and tell you what you need to know about the dev stream today. So let's get started. So they started the stream talking about the Howling Grounds Lunar New Year event for Chinese New Year, Year of the Dog, whatever you want to call it, Spring Festival. Uh, the event that's on right now and how we've all been working together to get our golden coins and burnt coins to accumulate 10 million together as a community and we're on the precipice of reaching it. Certainly by the time this video goes live, we will have already hit the 10 million mark with a week left in the event. Uh, let's just have a quick look at it right now. See, we're almost at 9.9 .9 million, so it's certainly going to hit the 10 million mark by the time this video goes live. So congratulations to all of us on that. And they revealed this Feng Min cosmetic. Yes, the name's Feng Min. I'm not saying it wrong. Anybody who says that I'm not saying Feng Min it is uh, incorrect. But anyway, so the Feng Min cosmetic here is this beautiful phoenix jacket. And if you look at it even more closely, you can just see all of this beautiful detail and embroidery. And we're all going to get that. But we have to wait until the event is over, from what I'm told which won't be until March the 1st. So even if we hit the 10 million today, which most certainly we will, we aren't going to get that cosmetic for Fangman until uh, March 1st. And then they mentioned that there's a screenshot contest going on right now. You have until February 25th at midnight Eastern Standard Time to submit your creative screenshot taken from in-game. They wanted to have a theme of the Year of the Dog, something to have to do with this Howling Grounds competition. And... Um, it says that your screenshot will be judged based on that topic, encapsulated as best you can and get creative. You can use whichever perks, items, maps, or offerings you would like to help you get those artistic shots. Uh, the theme has to be in the year of the dog, you need a minimum of one killer and two survivors in the shot with no graphic modifications, in-game screenshots only. One screenshot per person can be submitted. If the requirements aren't met, your submission will be disqualified. Here's what last year's winner looked like. That was a year of the rooster, right? When we had those Chinese firecrackers. This is really a beautiful shot of the nurse pulling somebody out of the locker with the firecrackers exploding below. That's the one that won. So what they're going to do is they're going to take what they consider the best 50, and they're going to allow the community to vote on their top 10, and then they're going to pick from those top 10 the uh, first, second, and third place winners. The prizes are very exclusive uh, first prize is going to get a pair of the fan kicks dead by daylight sneakers a golden fung min outfit donkey david jacket and the ace tie big hat the purple hat for ace those were three regional exclusives from uh, shanghai china um, south korea and um, thailand so those are very rare pc only uh, a, cop, a signed copy of a PS4, Xbox, copy of the game, Dead by Daylight beanie, pin, and stress ball. That's what you get for first place. And then second place and third place gets all of the things that I just mentioned, except for the sneakers. So you get those uh, exclusive cosmetics. And as you know, the Feng Min is a very expensive outfit. It's very exclusive, very expensive. That's the thing that everybody's going to want. That's the most valuable item in the whole prize pack, in my opinion. Even though the sneakers probably cost $100 from Fankick's store. So get out there, start snapping your screenshots. I have this one, but I'm afraid that it's going to be automatically disqualified because they're going to think that I didn't actually get this as an in-game screenshot, even though I did. But uh, I don't know. Unless I come up with something better, I'm probably going to submit this one. So we'll see. I just used the two-killer glitch to uh, get this screenshot. We got two Huntresses in the game, which is going to be coming up in a video probably next week. But um, I'll submit it. We'll see what happens. Probably won't win. Probably they'll just say, oh, this guy used Photoshop and duplicated the Huntress or something, and they'll throw it straight into the bin. But uh, it'll be worth a shot. So good luck to all of you out there. They noted that there's an upcoming PlayStation 4 free weekend. Uh, stay tuned for that. So if you uh, PlayStation people have any friends who don't have the game and you want to get them to try it, you're going to be given an opportunity to allow them to play for free and join you. And then I believe that the, the, the game and the DLCs are also going to be on sale during that time. So if you get them to play it and they enjoy it, 
then they'll be able to also buy it at a discounted price. And then they had the data from the PTB survey that we all took part in. Um, there were 7,800 people who completed the survey, I believe. Not Queen had a big stack of cards with all the data, but they didn't share it with us, which was unfortunate. I kind of wanted to see that. For me, parts of the survey were really strange because they had options that said, this is too easy and this is too hard, and there was no, like, just right. You couldn't say, you know, it, you either had to say it was too easy or too hard to get an emblem in certain categories, and you couldn't say just right. So, to me, that kind of made the data flawed out of the gate, but they noted that all of the data has been given to design, and they've looked at the data from the PTB, and they are reworking it. I do have all of the values on the PTB for how you could actually score in the different categories. I don't know if that's something that you all want to see, like for example, for you to get an iridescent emblem in um, Lightbringer as a survivor, you needed to do three and a half generators, which is a lot. and doesn't leave a lot of generators for anybody else. So uh, I have all of those values to show you how that stuff is scored. Uh, maybe I'll put that together in a future video. But they are redesigning it because one of the things they did note from the survey was that people felt like it was too easy to get emblems as killer. So I expect all the values that I have from the PTB and how you would score in the different categories will change. But um, I think you needed to get ir to get iridescent chaser in the game as a killer. You needed to find and hit survivors nine times. They said right now where they're headed is they want to improve a lot of quality of life issues in the game. They want to make the game better for us, which I'm sure we're all excited to hear about. Um, you probably know that there is still this hit sound error in the game since they patched it. That when the killer hits you, it doesn't make a sound. Uh, when 1.9.2 came out, we had new sounds, which were actually very old sounds from the beta. And so they removed those. Now we have no hit sounds. Um... You know, they're working on it. It's going to get fixed. But they want to make the game better for us. They want to redesign some perks, change some perks that are meta. Decisive Strike was mentioned to be one that is going to be looked at and um, improve some of the perks that are little used, try and get more of a balance in the perk loadouts for people so we don't have people who just go to the same perks all the time, which is very encouraging. And they also noted that they are working on an original chapter which is very exciting. They talked about how they want to change the ranking system, and the emblem system is headed towards that direction. I think the emblem system, once they get that fine-tuned, is going to change the way we rank up, and then I, they want to go even further beyond that, which it, they didn't elaborate, but I think they want to stretch it out and make it different levels of even the highest echelon. We'll have to see what they have in mind. But as it stands right now pre-emblem system, say for example, Monto's rank 1 isn't the same as my rank 1. There just isn't enough differentiation. There, uh, he, you know, We're two different levels of player. Even though I'm hitting rank 1 four or five months in a row, whatever it is, you know, is, I'm being carried along the way and Monto gets himself there. And so uh, emblem system is going to change that. Um, I do think there needs to be that separation of quality of player. And uh, we'll see where we go on that from here. And while we didn't get an apology about this whole yanking back and forth on these flashlight and pallet stun changes that were inserted and then removed, I, I think an apology would have gone a long way. Um, they did kind of express some things about how they do want to make flashlights easier for entry-level players. So I would expect that that will be reinserted into the game at some point. But they also want to change the animation times on certain things. Uh, you just simply, the way it was right now when 1.9.2 came in, you just couldn't have it so that the killer would have to endure this whole pickup animation with the flashlight in their face and be automatically blinded. And the person who blinded you could be 30 meters down the road and you have to finish this pick up before you do the dropping and then go through that stun time is so critical in this game for killers so they really you can't have it both ways you can't have to endure this animation that you can't be 
brought out of while you're being blinded and then face the stun as well it just it's too much and they r realize that now um, I don't know how much testing went into it when they had the idea to do this I do think it is a good idea to make the flashlight more viable in the hands of not necessarily entry-level players but so that you don't have to be so skillful that you need to look up videos and figure out how to actually make this flashlight work. They need to make it an item that has some use more than... It's based... In the hands of some people, a flashlight is the same as a broken key in the game. Because if you don't know how to use it and do that timing and wait for the pickup animation to finish, it might as well be a broken key in your hand. And I think they understand that and they want to make the item have more uses but at the same time, they have to balance it out so it, it isn't so overwhelmingly powerful against a killer. Now, I know people say, well, just bring Lightborn, damn! But, like, when you are stuck in that animation and you have that flashlight pouring in your face, you're going to get blinded anyway. So anyway, they talked about, like, changing animation times for certain things and speeding them up for killer. Like somebody pointed out when a killer comes... To wreck a gen, they have to go through this multi-second process of smacking it, and then a, a survivor can just come up and insta-tap it and stop that regression. And those are the kinds of things that they want to look at and address and fix some of these animation times for killers when, in, when time is such a critical component of this game for killers in stopping people. And as much as Matthews told us about the golden toolboxes when asked about some of the ciphers that are in the game and can they be deciphered and what do they mean and could you point us in the right direction he trolled us again and said yes he could but he wasn't going to but that they are solvable I think I know a couple of these things that exist in game what he's talking about Venomans brought them to my attention and I plan on doing a video about it in the future to bring some more exposure to these so-called ciphers that may exist in game and um, hopefully together we can maybe crack the code and figure it out. But right now, I have no idea what any of the ciphers, quote unquote, that I've seen in game mean. But Investigative Ace will return and he'll be on the case and we'll see if we can figure it out together. And as much as I do believe that they really want to balance the game out for killers, I just can't believe that Matthew Cote said this. I used to love playing as a killer, win or lose, it was fun, but currently, no matter what, it's just filled with stress and anger. Killers aren't feared anymore. Uh, do you have any plans or ideas how you would like to improve the killer imp experience? Well, I, I would say maybe try Survivor for a bit. Uh, no, but it's true. I mean, change it up. Maybe you're just tired, you know? Or play something else for a, a week. Try Civilization or something. Just for a refreshing change. Like, what? What? Like, I'm hesitant to even show this because... The clip is so damaging to the brand. I can't even believe he said it, but I feel like it's the elephant in the room from this dev stream, and I have to talk about it. But I just don't know where he's going with that, because if you encourage people who play Killer to either play Survivor or go play another game, then your whole population of the game collapses. If nobody's playing Killer... There are no games for survivors, and it's over. It's over, man. Game over, man. Like, what are you thinking when you say that? Like, at least give a canned response and say, yeah, we're always thinking about balance, and we're, we're trying to make things better for Killer. Don't tell people to go play another game or, to, or stop playing Killer and go play Survivor. What on earth are you thinking? Matthew, I know that you can be facetious and dismissive of some people's questions that you think are silly, but I, I just really think you crossed the line on that one. And a lot of people are going to take that to heart, and I think you hurt the brand, if I'm being completely honest, and it saddens me. So literally, as I was about to render this video and publish it to YouTube, Matthew Cote released a statement apologizing for his remarks on the dev stream, and it reads, I'd like to start by apologizing to the amazing Dead by Daylight community, for my comment during the Twitch stream this week, I reacted poorly to a very valid concern with a flippant remark, and that was not appropriate. It's not easy to maneuver through these live shows to always keep the proper line of communication, and on this occasion, I failed. I preach respect, and I need to show a better behavior. 
What I was trying to express is that I care deeply about the fact that Dev by Daylight should be a pleasant, exciting, and rewarding experience for players. All of us on the Dev team are doing our best to give you a game free of frustrations and pain. We will keep at it, and, we'll con and it will continue to get better. I know a lot of us have been playing it intensely for a long time now, and sometimes if playing the game makes you stressed or angry to the extent that you're not enjoying it, it's okay to take a break for a moment, that's all. The whole team here is committed to keeping the game alive for years to come. We strive every single day to improve it and to make your experience in it as fun and satisfying, satisfying as it can be. And we want you to be back again and again for as long as possible. We'll be here working hard to bring you a more solid and healthy game that will be able to support more and more content that will hopefully blow your minds over and over again. Matthew Cote. Takes a big man to realize his mistake and step up and apologize, and he did that very quickly, and I appreciate it. And Matthew, I accept your apology, and thank you for giving one to everybody on uh, in the community. It's been, a, it's been a tough week. We had a really bumpy patch come out, update come out with the, um, the Lunar New Year with all of that, and we didn't really feel like we got an apology for that. And then coupled with the slap in the face to all the killers, like that, the timing couldn't have been worse. So I do genuinely appreciate your apology and thank you for giving us one. Okay, that's all I've got for you this week. I'm sure we've passed the 10 million mark already on the coins for the lunar event. So congratulations to all of us for unlocking that Fung Min exclusive. And uh, let's keep it rolling because there's probably some people out there who still need the... Um, the coins to get the Huntress Mask or the David King Untamed Donkey Jack Cosmetic. So once the envelopes, I mean, the, at the end of the event, the envelopes are going to be of no use to you. They aren't going to spawn anything past March 1st. So if you want to save one for a souvenir or something in your inventory, you might as well play the others to help people along. Help them all grind and get um, their rewards as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time, and bye-bye.